This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Part one, we look back at the situation in Antarctica, not only for the so-called eco-tourists, but also to see if this huge continent is winning or losing in these times of great change. At the time when the Argentines... Here at St Andrews Bay, two women researchers lived in that hut and made a film about this fantastic place. Okay, so good luck. Last zodiac, 11 o'clock. Its geology is fascinating too. Canadian Gilles Allard explains the landscape and the way it's been shaped by ice, and particularly here, by water. This stream turns out to be a lifeline down to the sea. The adaptable pintados feed in the shallows at its mouth. Upstream, the penguins must cross it, not very easy on those slippery stones, so polished by the eroding current. It's a stream of life and death today. The sheath mills are scavenger and opportunist, as interested in a tourist tripod as in the source of a food supply that those other opportunists, the pintados, have moved upstream for. And this is it. Their big relative, the giant petrels, are working on a body stuck in the ice. and they'll follow it down to the sea. These scavengers have plenty of choice. A sheath bill will peck living flesh or maybe clean up any parasite in a wound. In a dirty job, they keep surprisingly clean. Skewers bathe in the stream. And then it's back to work, another dirty job. They tidy up bits of birth core, though the mother may not appreciate the service. These vultures of the far south lead a tough life. This one will become an opportunity soon to be fought over in this ongoing battle to survive. 
Perhaps this is how that one got injured. And there's a prettier version, a white form, though I have to say its habits are no different. Not so appealing as the delicate Pintado, who follows us on our way. And the white giant petrel follows us too, a superb flyer. Below, is yet another petrel, a tiny one. These small storm petrels are the commonest birds on earth, except of course for that favorite, the farmyard chicken. And isn't it nice when wildlife comes to you? These Gentoo penguins are just having a look. Perhaps they've never seen a ship before. Okay, now they have. And over there is another kind of penguin for our list. Macaronis, named after an 18th century Italian hairstyle. November is still early in the Antarctic spring. Nesting is not exactly frantic. Anyway, it's too windy up here. Down below, they watch the gentle goings-on in a sheltered corner, but it's the lull before the storm, literally. Quite suddenly, the Antarctic lets rip. Even if the last Zodiac has to really struggle back on board, the Pintado just jinks by in the instant gale. For the relieved passengers, hastily summoned back, this is the first blast of reality. But as they, and the friendly Pintados will discover, there is more to come. After all, they, and the dolphins too, are heading towards the real thing, the Antarctic and its ice. This is the way they get after two weeks on this. Nicola, in charge of the bar, and quite normal really, recalls a thrilling movie moment with an ice pick. And this is ice worth waiting for. Whiskey on the rocks is really on an iceberg, a bit of a glacier in fact. And there's plenty more to come, more than you could ever want. Russian skills will be put to the test. It's pretty enough now, but things are changing again, and this time it's more serious.
just how well built for this kind of thing is the Professor Malchanov. They can fax Australia from here, but quite quickly that sort of technology means a lot less. It's looking ominous. it's getting darker, which doesn't help morale. Pintados are of very minor interest right now. We're all wondering about the Russian crew on a Russian ship with an awful lot of ice out there. Thank goodness, it's supper time. We do know that the Russians serve a good meal, cooked by an English chef. So let's drown our worries and forget what's out there. Of course, this is exactly to be expected. The crew knows this, the leaders do too. They've pushed through it before. Seabirds live in it, but it is nice when it stops. As long as the ship doesn't, there's always a risk of getting stuck, and you might run out of whiskey, though not ice. It's never like this in Hong Kong. And today, there's nothing much for the Journal of a Dutchman. Except for this, the very symbol of the ice, a snow petrel. It seems to lead us to more open water at last. ecotourism here, but it's sometimes difficult not to cause a fright. There's still ice about, and this size is well worth avoiding, but it's probably more dangerous back in New York. Compared with that place, this scene must be as different as you could ever witness. This is the real Antarctica, and our captain has brought us safely here across the ice, 600 miles from South Georgia. It's getting tougher. Hannah Point, Livingston Island, a place to watch out for gulls. Visitors must be careful not to disturb nesting birds. If they do, the gulls could nip in and steal the eggs, or the eggs of other gulls that have been scared off. No eggs yet for this chinstrap penguin. It's still nest building. But breeding in the colony is well underway. A changeover at the nest is careful. The precious eggs must be protected all the time.
There's a closeness rule. Tourists may only approach within five meters, and the leaders ensure that this is obeyed. Often, though, the animal will approach you. Are you then supposed to back off and keep that distance? Time to move on, and soon things start to go wrong again. Stuart and Nick are looking for a landing next to a huge chinstrap penguin colony at Bailey Head on Deception Island. Those dark masses on the hills are solid with penguins. But, as the tour company firmly points out, no visit is guaranteed. After all, if you come here, it's part of the package and you don't get your money back. We are on the outside of Deception Island, being deceived. Ahead appears to be solid cliff. But as we get closer, there seems to be a gap there. Indeed, there is an entrance. And inside, buildings by a huge volcanic caldera. The wind makes it a tricky bit of navigation, the first visit for our skillful captain and crew. Inside, this dormant volcano is hardly sheltered. Geologist Gilles has to work hard to explain about the volcanic eruption that destroyed the British station in 1969. And it melts the snow, creates a mud flow, a big flood that comes down this valley and is so way at the north end of 69. 1921, there were ships here in the harbour. There's a derelict Norwegian whaling station too. It's very bleak. That's not wind-blown sand, it's steam. Volcanic heat from below produces hot springs, a sort of jacuzzi for the skewers. Sometimes the tourists bathe at deception, but today the best place is still iced in. But spring is here. High on what was once the wall of a volcano sit a few Pintado petrels our companions for so far on their nests. True seabirds seem almost reluctant to come ashore and they stay as short a time as necessary when they do. This is where pintados like to be. They seem to come alongside us almost for the fun of it, riding the bow wave. There's a southern full moon too. Nice surprise, a rare Antarctic petrel. And 
on to Couverville Island of special relevance to ecotourism. For it was here that a field party from the Scott Polar Research Institute monitored the impact of thousands of visitors on a penguin colony. Preliminary results suggest that breeding success is relatively unaffected. Professor Molchanov is now heading for the highlight of the whole trip. And on the bridge, there's a buzz of excitement. More so in the zodiacs. Because we're landing on mainland Antarctica. Hello. Welcome to Antarctica. <laughs> Up to now, we've been on islands, not on the Antarctic Peninsula itself. That doesn't matter much to locals, like the Weddell seal. He seems totally relaxed about everything, even 50 excited creatures that look a bit like penguins. And behave oddly at times. Nick still got his fancy dress from the party the night before. He is a serious biologist, believe it or not, an excellent leader. and ecotourism is a serious and big business. It's three weeks since Nick and all of us arrived on that plane, and most enjoyed themselves, got their photos, and saw things perhaps they never thought they'd see. the sheer scale, an elephant seal dwarfed in a massive landscape. The experience of being amongst it all, and with the pictures to take home as a reminder of those special moments on the beach. Well led? I think so. The Professor Molchanov continues to eco-tour, that odd word, up to the other end of the world, the Arctic. But it's down here in the Antarctic that ecotourism has become such a feature. Now, 15,000 tourists come each year. For the wilderness, the abundance, and surprisingly to realize in such a tough place, it's fragility. Penguins may be tame, and they may be poisoned by pollutants in the sea from the atmosphere thousands of miles away. So the tourist right here is not the problem. And leopard seals feed on penguins. They're the next link up the food chain of possible chemical damage from afar.
more visible is this. Tourists can see for themselves places which, until eco-tours came, the outside world hardly knew about. Military bases and scientific research stations have been reported on. Today, it would take the world's biggest sheath bill to clear up the mess scattered in Antarctica. The future of Antarctica is in the balance. The wildlife, like our ubiquitous pintados, need plankton, pollution-free. Plankton supports huge fish stocks now being raided like that classic past resource, the great whales. If we, as mere human beings, upset this balance, this mighty continent will be changed, perhaps forever. And the spectacular economy of its nature in the sea will not be worth visiting in the eco-tours of the future. The future is now. There are cold wars going on in the freezing waters of the Ross Sea so rich, so vulnerable. Illegal poaching goes on for Patagonian toothfish, known as white gold. The ship was sunk, a loser, in a greedy world, where Antarctica still just offers hope.